I'm always, I'm always delighted to be back here to do this show every year. And today I'm going to send this story out to Sharon, who said she particularly likes this story. It's a very ancient story from the British Isles. It was already an old story by the time Shakespeare stole it and used it for one of his plays. He gave it a sad ending. But the story went on, traveled across the Atlantic Ocean to the southern United States, where it was picked up and told by many, many generations of people. And the version I'm going to tell today comes from a folklorist named Richard Chase. The story is called, Like Meat Loves Salt. There was once a king who had three daughters. And one day he called his oldest daughter in and he said, Daughter, I'm going into town today. What would you like me to bring you? Oh, father, she said, bring me a flashing red dress. Then he called his second daughter in and he said to her, what would you like me to bring you from town? Oh, papa, she said, bring me a shiny dark green dress. Then he called his youngest daughter in and he asked her the same question. What would you like me to bring you from town? Bring me a plain white dress, she said. The king got up on his horse and rode away into town, and he bought the three dresses. And he wrapped them up very carefully and folded them, put them in his saddlebag, and set off toward home. As he was riding down a mountain path, didn't a branch from a maple tree knock against him? And he reached up and cut it off so it wouldn't knock off his crown. And as soon as he'd cut it, it flowered and beautiful, fragrant white roses appeared on that branch. He took the twig and set it on his saddle horn and brought it home with him. As soon as he got home, he was anxious to see his daughters. He called the oldest one into him and he said to her, Daughter, how much do you love me? Oh, Papa, she said, that's easy. I love you more than all the gold and jewels in the world because, well, that's what she had on her mind. And he liked that answer very much. So he took one of the roses, broke it off the branch, put it on the flashing red dress and gave it to his daughter. And she ran off with it to get ready for a dance. Then he called his second daughter in. He was anxious to hear what she'd have to say too. And he asked her, daughter, how much do you love me? Oh, Papa, that's easy, she said. I love you more than... Oh, all the boyfriends and sweethearts I could ever have in the whole world. Because that's what she had on her mind. Her father was very pleased with that answer, too. And he broke off one of the roses from the branch. And he put it against the dark, sparkly green dress. And he gave it to her, and she rushed away to, to get ready for the dance. And then he called in his youngest daughter. Now she was his favorite. And he was especially anxious to hear what it is she would answer. So he said, daughter, how much do you love me? I don't have an answer for a question like that. But I want to know, he said. How much do you love me? I just love you. I, lo I love you, that's all. I want to know, he said. Well, father, I, I love you like meat loves salt. When the king heard that answer, he flew into a rage, threw the white dress down on the floor, took hold of his daughter and locked her away in a tower where she never saw another soul for many years, except for the woman who cooked for her and brought her food. The pearl girl sat up in the tower and waited and watched. And one day she was sitting up in the window of her tower when the duke from England came riding by and he looked up. And he saw the beautiful young woman in tears, and he just knew that he had to speak to her somehow. So he rode over to the bottom of the tower where she was seated, took hold of the grapevine that was growing along the side, and climbed right up until he reached her window. And then he spoke to her, and she told him all that had happened to her. And he said he would like to take her back with him to England and marry her and make her his queen. So together the two of them climbed down from the tower and rode away on his horse till they came to England. They got married and they were very happy and time passed. Meanwhile, back at home, her two sisters had gotten married too. 
and they'd gone off to live with their own husbands in their own kingdoms. And after a while, the old king grew much older. He grew so old he could no longer look after his own kingdom. He decided he would go and live with his oldest daughter. But when he came to her house, she took all the treasures that he'd brought with him and sold them for her own pleasure. And then he realized that she did not really love him. He went away to the home of his second daughter. But his second daughter's husband didn't like him. He made him go eat in the kitchen with the servants and sleep on a hard bed in the servants' quarters. And then he realized that his second daughter didn't really love him either. And he wandered away. And nobody even noticed. And he wandered away until he came back to his own old castle. And nobody looked for him. After some time, the husbands of his two older daughters declared war on the king or the Duke of England. And the Duke came with all his troops and his horses and his ships to fight the war against those two men. And his wife came too. And when they'd crossed the water, she said to him, Husband, we are near my old home. I would like to go and have a look around. And when I've looked around, I'll come back. She went away until she came to the place where she had once lived. But to her sorrow, she found that her home had burnt and was in ruins. And there, in the ruins of her old home, she found her father wandering and quite out of his senses. He'd made himself a crown out of blackberry briars. And he wandered through the wreckage of his old home, mumbling to himself. When she went up to him and spoke to him, he didn't know her. She took him by the hand and led him away and brought him back to where her husband was with his troops. And after the war was over and they had won, they took him back to England with him. His daughter made him a fine apartment in her palace. And there he lived very well, but he still did not recognize her. And one day, she went down into the kitchen. She said to the cook, Tonight, when you cook the meat for our supper, I want you to cook it without a single grain of salt. Oh, I don't want to do that, said the cook. It won't taste good. Honestly, it will not taste good. Never mind, said the queen. Just, just do as I ask. And so the cook made the supper without a single grain of salt. And they brought her father into the dining hall as usual, and he sat down in front of his meal. He took a bite full of the meat, and we got in his mouth. All of a sudden, he broke down in tears, threw his face down on his plate, and wept. What's the matter, said his daughter as she stood beside him. I had a daughter once, he said. She told me that she loved me like meat loves salt. But I didn't understand what she meant, and I didn't try. And I was very cruel to her, and I punished her. And now, I don't know what's happened to her. Father, she said. The old king looked up, and there before him was his own daughter, and now he recognized her. He was so overjoyed to see where he was that he sent servants back across the ocean to find the white dress. And when they brought it back to him, they brought back a branch that was still covered with sweet, fragrant white roses. And they were as fresh as they had been on the day when he'd picked them. And that is the story of Like Meat Loves Salt. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Eleanor. Thank you. Lovely to have you back again. Uh, just before